We are Squawking Dead, a podcast pulverizing episodes beyond the Walking Dead universe. And today we have a special treat for you. We had done a handful of interviews during Anthony's That's My Viewing Party, the Walking Dead series finale viewing party in Covington, Georgia. Among them, first, is Cosmo Mom 9 Rachel Burt interviewing Carrie Genzel, Auditor Clark from the Commonwealth on The Walking Dead. She talks about the process leading up to when she was cast, what it feels like to be a part of the Walking Dead family, as well as her time on set, keeping in mind that it was during COVID. But it was really cool to see Rachel and Carrie just have this conversation to the point where Rachel didn't even introduce our guest, at least for the audio podcast. So that's why I'm here with you right now. So enjoy this interview with Carrie. We really hope you enjoy the handful of interviews that we have coming your way in the next couple weeks. And without further ado... Have you ever listened to any of our podcasts? I have. You have? I have. Oh, that is oh, so yeah. cool. I have listened. <laughs> <laughs> we um, we tend to get uh, pretty in-depth. That, I was just our- going <laughs> to say that because there's times when I'm like, gosh, I feel like I don't watch the show. Like, These guys are really, they dig deep. We but do that's cool. very, very, we dig yeah. very deep. Well, I, I should be more, David digs very, okay. very deep. Okay. Yeah. And he, he really gets in there. I, I sometimes, t- you know, keep it light and on the surface, but we want people to listen to our podcast and then maybe rewatch some episodes through different eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like you guys are like a great companion to the show, right? You, you guys are, it's kind of like way back in the day when they'd have like the director's cut and they would oh, talk right? yeah. Yeah. about what was really going <laughs> on. the most about working on The Walking Dead. Oh my gosh. You know, I was a big fan of Walking Dead uh, before I got the part, uh, before I got Clark. And so it was just such an incredible thrill to be able to step into that universe and in that world and interact with characters that I loved and had, you know, been following. And uh, I like to think that it's not the end, really. It's living on the universe, knowing what we know about The Walking Dead universe. Anything can happen at any time, so you never know. Clark could drop up somewhere else. This is true. So, Wouldn't that be cool? I would love that because I'm there. I would love to know more about Clark. I've had a lot of fans come up with theories and things <laughs> like that, which is fun. Um, one of which that she was really CRM, that she was like embedded oh. in the Commonwealth. So which when, I you might really see her again. So if that's I was like, true. That's, a, but that's a fan theory. I'm not saying that's yeah. the <laughs> truth. And it's also very curious to me that her last name is Clark. Clark, considering right, right, yeah, Clark family that was a choice here. Right, they didn't have. Why would you use that last name uh-huh. or any last name at all? That's like, correct. She could just, you know, she could, she could have been Pam. Absolutely, oh, Pam, of course. Well, I guess <laughs> <laughs> maybe not Pam, not Pam, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, Karen. Right. No, we get. Oh, well, well, there's a lot. There's of, there's so many names. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> There's even a Barbara. There's, There's a Barbara in Alexandria. You know what? The thing oh is, my gosh. is that you have... Gosh, I should have looked at this before uh, today, but I was trying to remember what my number, my cast number was, and it was like in the 400s. Whoa. Yes. It was like 469 or something like that uh-huh. when I looked at the number, because every, all, every um, character has a number. They're probably in the wow. 500s at so, this point. So, and we're talking characters with names, yeah, right? Yeah, that's I mean, with names. Yeah. Yeah. So even more than that, just part of the cast. That's right. insane. Which is kind of cool, because wow. like Dog has a number and, oh. you know. <laughs> Which is <laughs> funny, because his name's Seven. Yeah. <laughs> And then when you know when you get the sheet, the call sheet, it's all kind of very cloak and dagger. <laughs> There's names missing, and, like stuff where you're like, we know who's in the show, <laughs> right? right? Right. We know who number one is. <laughs> who well, do you think you're fooling? Yeah. Now, do so, those change? Do the numbers change depending on who's on set, or is it like this is your number? No, that's, that's the it. character's okay. number, okay. right? Yeah. So they okay. they keep that as consistency because they use that throughout. So they'll use it with wardrobe. They'll use it with different things. So there's always a consistency mm-hmm. of whose wardrobe that is or whose anything. Right? That makes sense. Just yeah. keep it straightforward. I mean, can you imagine yeah. trying to keep track of all of that on The Walking Dead? All these seasons with all these characters, mm-hmm. all these different communities. Like, it makes my head explode. Yeah. 
Yeah, they gotta be very organized. Yeah, with props and everything. What's something that you're always gonna remember from being on set? Oh gosh, I think just the excitement of walking on set the first time and of like, wow, this is it. Like, see, I think like getting the script and then seeing the Walking Dead, you know, the you know, on there, and I'm like, wow, oh, this man. is really cool. Like, I'm a part of this, and opening the page, and it said, you know, Clark Kerrigan's L. Like, and I'm like, ah, yeah, it's real. <laughs> uh, you know, every st there's so many things because, like, every step of the way, it was cool. You know, driving to the um, driving to Sonoy and like going through the gate. Of like, oh. hi, cast. You, know? you, get, you get to go beyond the right? beyond the game. And the thing that was so <laughs> weird is that it was so we shot those first two episodes. This was before vaccines, before any of that, right? So, oh, wow. um, and driving on the on the lot in Sonoy and seeing like these signs that you would think were props, right? That say, you know, uh, testing, COVID testing, oh, this and that. Yeah, it seemed like they. They would be props from yeah. The Walking Dead, but they're real and you like, go and they're like <laughs> test real life. And yeah. like, this is really weird, oh right? Gosh, that right. we're actually doing this and it's for The Walking Dead. So it was very <laughs> odd. So definitely I'll remember that the first time of driving on and thinking, this is odd. And it wasn't the first time I drew, drove on the lot. It was probably a few times after that that I saw Mike, them fitting Michael Shaw in his orange... Um, oh, Mr. Sherbet? Yeah. Mr. Sherbet. <laughs> For the first time, and he was, like, standing outside of the wardrobe trailer, and I was like, oh, that must be Mercer. <laughs> now, originally, Clark was supposed to be in the Commonwealth gear. Oh. Initially. Oh. And there was a bit of panic because when I when they booked me I was on another show and we had to quarantine so we co I couldn't leave and go to a wardrobe fitting oh, okay. and so they were like well I don't know if there's going to be enough time because you have a very special costume and it has to be we have to measure you and I have, I'm thinking what in the heck am I wearing and then I was like oh, oh my gosh she's in you know the commonwealth soldier oh, outfit wow. but anyway they changed their mind which was probably you better. know I I honestly like Clark's outfit better. I think it fits the character a lot better. Yeah. Trying to picture Clark in a in a yeah. trooper uniform, I'm like, I don't know if the character would have had the same impact, right? Yeah, I think that that's what was shoot. It was very unknown. Like who is yeah. it? Like we looked like we were from the X Files or something, right? Which like, I liked. Which though. was cool. It had that mystery factor to it. Yeah. Which made the character even more mysterious. And even, and like, even in Borgia, yeah. they're like, you're very, you guys are very Mulder and Scully. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. Right? Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. So, I like that too. And also, those trooper uh, costumes were not comfortable. At all. <laughs> it was probably better to wear the suit. Well, and you guys, you had to sit down for your scene. So I imagine sitting in those outfits is not oh, very comfortable either. Yeah, that's what I've yeah. been hearing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> with the, we, we're laughing all the time with the booty plates. Right. Like, trying to sit with that little plate over your be, And they were like little plastic chairs. So we'd be like sliding right? down and be like, Start to look like a Reset. badass when you're sliding off your chair. Right. I was already, you know, struggling to look like a badass because it was so cold when we shot that. And there, we're oh. in an old warehouse, so there's no heat. And when they put little heaters in to try to warm us up, well, it would just go up. Right? right. So it didn't really do anything. And you can't have them on when you film because you can hear them. The noise. Right? Sure. If you go back and watch those scenes... Outside of the odd time I'm referring to my clipboard, I always put my hands under the desk because I have the little hand warmers under there and I'm like holding oh, nice. on to them for dear life, <laughs> oh. trying to stay warm. And I was wearing fluffy slippers <laughs> <laughs> because I had like pumps on with leather sole bottoms and I was like, hey, A, you can't see my feet and my feet are like icicles. Do you guys have any little booties or whatever? And they brought these little fuzzy slippers. Oh. So there, I did see a behind the scenes picture where you can actually see that I'm wearing slippers. It's oh, funny. I was going to make it on screen, right? Because now I'm going to have to go back no, and rewatch that scene over that and over seen, and over. But there was a still that I saw that was posted, and you can see that I have little slippers on. Okay. And I was like, you know, she likes to be comfortable That's when right. she's auditing. Yeah. As one not? does. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Makes yeah. her more badass, right? Right. Like, that's right. I have slippers on, and you're still scared of me. Right. <laughs> and 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you have a favorite moment that happened on set? Oh my gosh. I think it, you know, they're just, it, we, we had so much fun and we were all so cold. So we didn't joke around a lot, but we did joke, <laughs> of course, right? Somewhat. And we had like an ongoing running joke that they were all coming in for a job interview <laughs> and that we were, we had finalized it to the four candidates. So we'd, every time they come in, I'd be like, thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> We really liked what you said at your last interview. We've, we've really narrowed it down, but we have a few more questions, right? So every time we laugh, but we, we were really so cold. Everyone wanted to get through it and get back to the sure. warm, the room where it was warm. The thing is with the with the Walking Dead is it's all about family, mm -hmm. and that goes behind the scenes as well. That's the cast, the crew, like, and you felt that. I felt that. Even before I got on set, but just even in base camp, it was like, welcome to the family. One of the first things that was said to me when I went to get do, like, we had a hair and makeup test and wardrobe fitting and all that stuff, but they said, you're part of the Walking Dead family now. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, that's it. Welcome to the family. Aww. And there's, and you feel that. It felt like a big hug. Like, it felt like I was like, that's pretty badass. Like, that's a pretty cool family to be a part of. Because that's like... We're worldwide global family yeah. and as a fan of the show like that really meant a lot to me mm -hmm. you know because I was like wow this is really cool and it was a little different because of COVID it, everybody was kind of broken up into pods so if you weren't working directly with anyone you never saw them oh, right yeah and so they, I didn't get to have that experience of like, oh, they're so and so. Oh, which sometimes you do as actors, if other people coming and going or whatever, because they kept everybody very separate, yeah. just to control everything and keep everyone healthy. And I don't think they ever had anyone get sick. They did a That's great good. job. Yeah, you would sort of see things on monitors sometimes of what other things <laughs> that were being shot, but I never saw anybody else from the mm. cast except for you know the actors I was working with. It felt like there was. This this weird barrier mm -hmm. between you and all the other actors, right? Because we all had the Z shields and masks, <laughs> and, and it's all like you're trying to talk to people, and it's like boom, you butt bump into it. You're like, oh, sorry, I'm sticking out this far. Right? It's so <laughs> awkward, right? And then even at lunch, you know, lunch a lot of times you can kind of get together and talk, and it's yeah. it feels like family. They kept everything was very you ordered it, they just brought it to you, and you Aww. eat it by yourself. And you're like, okay. Um, <laughs> Um, but definitely I did feel a part of the family and it was cool because um, my first day was Michael Shaw's first day and so it was oh, kind of fun, to, that be is like, fun. to be there for that very those first moments mm -hmm. and then see now like where that character is gone is really oh, exciting yeah. those first two episodes you know we gotten a hint of the Commonwealth from the end of season 10 mm -hmm. But we still were like, what's going on? And so there was a lot of mystery. And like when we first walked on set in the suits and like I got to have a manicure, which was a big deal. Like, oh, you get to have a manicure. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. No, the women never get to have right? a manicure. No kidding. So my hair was like perfect. <laughs> and I'm flat ironing my hair, you know. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is not what I thought my experience on The Walking Dead would be like, right? It would be like messy, dirty, you sure. know, like crawling in some mud. And um, anyway, but it was really cool. So people were like, okay, what's the deal with them? <laughs> the main cast members they do but for for myself like they don't give you the whole script right because mm -hmm. they don't want anything getting out right. you're on a need to know basis right? <laughs> exactly. so I didn't know anything else that was really going on in that in those first episodes so it was fun to be able to watch that and then you know see everything that we shot kind of come to life All but pieces it was pretty together. intense that that main interrogation scene is a really long scene I think it was like in the script like seven pages long or wow. something it was a lot. It took about a day and a half, I think, in total. Oh. Like, we were doing it for a long time. It was like, my husband was laughing because I would just keep repeating the question. Like, because I had to be really on and fast, and I'd have to do it with each character, like, in rapid order of, mm -hmm. like, okay, we do it with Eugene. Okay, then we do it with Princess. We do you know, and, 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 and so he's like, I think I know all the questions <laughs> at this point because you kept, like, just repeating them and repeating them and repeating them. But, <laughs> 
it was just one of those jobs that was really special. There's as an actor, yeah. we're always happy to work, but it um, it really meant a lot to me because it was really exciting to step into that universe that I have loved, yeah. you know, and then to feel really welcomed and a part of the family immediately was really great. Who would you love to see have their own spinoff? Oh, shoot. Well, I think they've chosen some good people already. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. But you're like, I want to see those stories continue. Although, sort of sad to see that, you know, with Carol, I'd love to see Carol yes. continue on. I think in terms of the whole sort of series character arc, she is the character that I really... Are, is, I'm drawn to. How did you join the cast? How did you find out about the role? Did you? What was the audition process like? Yeah, so the audition process, again, it was during COVID, although it hasn't changed since then, but uh, even though we've sort of been moving forward in life, uh, <laughs> but it was all remote, so I didn't meet anybody. I got, oh. um, I got an email from my agent, and she said, you have an audition for The Walking Dead, and I had auditioned for Walking Dead before, and one of the sisters shows once before and didn't okay. get it. So I was like, oh God, I loved it. This is the last season. I'd love to, you know, but whatever, just audition and let it go, right? Um, so I just recorded it and sent it in and then kind of forgot about it because I was working on something else and all of a sudden I got a call and they were like, so uh, you were their first choice and <laughs> they'd love to see you and I'm like, okay, but I'm like in quarantine right yeah. now. I can't, I can't get out. Uh, is that going to be a problem? So I was really lucky because I was actually working for Tyler Perry at the time. And my agent actually wrote him a letter explaining that <laughs> I booked The Walking Dead and that I'm a huge fan and it's a big, big deal for big me. Deal. And um, and that we needed to kind of shift some days around so that I could get out in time to start The Walking Dead. And he did it. Oh, I wow. know. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And he works on a really tight schedule and shoots over 100 pages a day, which nobody else does. Um, but he moved the days around so that I could get out earlier and start The Walking Aww. Dead, which was really cool. That so, is so sweet. I'll always be grateful to Mr. Perry. Thank uh, you, Tyler Perry. We appreciate exactly. that so much. Because he gets it. And unfortunately, that's where the recording ends. Rachel and Carrie actually had about an hour's worth of conversation, perhaps more, but our recording device only managed to capture about 15 to 18 minutes of it. In any case, I think we got to the meat of the conversation, and if you like what you heard, head over to ratethispodcast.com slash Dead. Five stars and an eggplant is all we need to know that you love us. But tell us what you liked, tell us what you didn't like, tell us what we could have been doing better. But remember to tell us at the end of each of these interviews and episodes, and if you really like what you heard, head over to either KO fi.com slash squawking dead or patreon.com slash squawking dead you don't have to buy us a coffee for 30 days of support of that content and you don't have to join a membership tier for as little as a dollar all we ask is for you to follow us so that you're in the know when we record when we drop our unedited episode recordings or whenever we have something cool that we don't post on social media because it's free to attend our recording sessions for anybody not just supporters but we don't post our recording schedule on social media and without further ado another thing we'd like to do at the end of these episodes episodes is acknowledge our supporters. It's a little perk that the upper tiers receive at the end of these episodes, starting with the Survivors tier members who have the privilege of joining us in our episode breakdowns on Cameron Mike, and they are at RealRyanGM on Twitter, at Jones 71 on Instagram, and Linda Peck Athens, aka FanArtLindy, ko-fi.com slash FanArtLindy. Moving along to our Whisperers tier members, we've got at Judith.Morton on Instagram, Aiden Atkin, who's at ko-fi.com slash Aiden Atkin at Tyler Philip Cox on both Instagram and Twitter at Sandy.D.Morrison on Facebook at J13 Voorhees on Instagram and Twitter at MRTNYVet on Twitter at Jasmine.IAC on Instagram and at Agent of Trauma on both Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for joining us for this interview. Stay tuned for two more interviews out of Anthony's That's My Viewing Party as well as our episodes of The Last of Us that we're covering and any other cool things that we have coming down the pike. Take care. We'll see you very soon. We are Squawking Dead. Squawking Dead.